Okay, so now that we have our picture inked, we're going to uh, scan it into Photoshop. So, uh, you might have some software that have come with your scanner, or you might already know how to do this, so, you know, don't worry about this step. But if you don't know, and you got your scanner ready, you can go to File, New, or uh, go to File, and go to Import, and it'll be WIA and whatever your scanner is. And then, I usually hit Custom Settings, and I adjust the quality to... 300 dpi you you want a big picture because the more information that your your uh, picture has the more accurate the next step will be and uh, the next step actually is going to be using the live trace feature of Adobe Illustrator and you have to have CS2 or above to use it um, don't don't fret because you can still uh, use Photoshop to get it pretty crisp but uh, that's how I do it in the end. So as soon as this comes up, you see what I'm talking about. All right, so your picture might pop up, and it'll be sideways, because <laughs> mine was uh, landscape mode. So you can go to uh, image at the top, then go to canvas or image rotation, and uh, this is 90 degrees counterclockwise. So I'll hit that. The, I might want to crop it out so you can go to the crop tool over here you can hit C on your keyboard and then you can drag a rectangle you can adjust how you like hit enter and you got your picture okay so let's zoom in on this alright this is the ink drawing that I did and it's it's still faded even though uh, you know it looked pretty sharp at first glance, when you get a you know when you scan it in, it's gonna lose some detail. It's just the way it is, unless you have an excellent scanner, which I do not. So uh, how do you get it to be looking crisp in Photoshop? You can simply hit Control L on your keyboard, and that will bring up your levels. Uh, and I want to say it's in Image Adjustments Levels. And um, you get this little dialogue here with uh, these three kind of nondescript sliders. Uh, this one will actually make your image darker. All the blacks will be more black. The closer you drag this little arrow to the center, and the whites will be more white. And you, you want to use this because, let me zoom in, you can see that there's some little artifacts here and there, like these little smudges that just get picked up by the light from the scanner that you probably didn't see before. So you can move these towards the center to make the whites all the way white, and you can move this one to the center to make the blacks all the way black. Or you can just hit auto, and it'll do it for you most of the time. So once you've got it like that, uh, it's pretty much just a matter of cleaning it up. There might be some parts like this that still, I mean, if you go all the way black, let me show you what I mean. You see how there's some like fading here? Let's say around the ear I had a lot, yeah. There's some smudging and it's just it's not all the way uh if you go too white, it'll make the blacks too faded. And if you try to counteract and make the blacks all the way, you know, dark, you get this pixelated look and it's crisp from a distance. But it's um it's horrible looking. It's very I don't know. I don't like it. Um, you might like it. Go for it if you like it. So, how do you fix this by hand? Well, you can use the uh, dodge tool. Um, select your dodge tool. You can hit O on the keyboard to pick that up, and it might you might have to click and hold on the icon here. It might be on one of these. Select the the, uh, the little lollipop thing. And then instead of uh, up here where it says ranges, hit the uh, the highlights. And then start going over the, the shaded stuff, and you'll see it'll just automatically disappear. That's pretty much all you got to do. All right, do the opposite then. Then go ahead and uh, click on the burn tool and change it to shadows instead of highlights. Go over the black areas that are kind of washed out, and you'll see them get darker. And that is pretty much all you got to do. So anyways, once you have it uh, set the way that you think you, you know is pretty good, save your picture, and I'm going to save mine.
and save it as maximum or whatever. If you do not have Adobe Illustrator CS, you're pretty much going to have to stop on this point. But uh, but if you do, then go ahead to this step. Uh, you'll have to have at least Adobe Illustrator 2, CS2 or higher. I have Adobe Illustrator 3 right here. So uh, go ahead and open the picture that you just saved. And it's going to pop up like this. Now this is still the inked version. Click on the picture once. Oh, back out. Uh, you'll have to have this black arrow selected on your toolbar. Click on your picture, and you'll see the top has stuff has changed to all this. There's a button that says Live Trace. Hit that. And it'll automatically trace for you. And then uh, you can mess with these settings. I, I always use the preset default. There's also there's comic art and everything. I just leave it at default. I leave the threshold at 128 and minimum area at 10 pixels. That's it. That's plenty for me. And then I hit expand. And uh, if you're not familiar with Illustrator, this is the first time you're ever seeing it or using it. What, what it's doing here is it's converting um, your, your hand-drawn art, which is referred to as roster art. Uh, that is basically in Photoshop it's using different pixels that are assigned different colors and it makes up an image that way so your image is, is just tons of different pixels at different color values whereas vector art which is what we have here is uh, a big list of mathematical uh, like points here and you could look you could see that that's what we got it's a bunch of different points that are have different values and different curve and arc values and and it, it draws lines between them using that which means that unlike roster art you, you can resize vector art as big or as small as you want without losing clarity and that's the best part and that's how I get the lines to look so crisp so basically once you've done this you can hit save and this will be you just hit Adobe Illustrator name it the same thing or name it something else if you want go back to Photoshop that's our old, our old one. Open your new vector art version of your drawing. Uh, make sure before you hit OK that the resolution is still 300 pixels per inch, which is 300 DPI. You know what you had scanned it in. Uh, hit OK. And I'm going to show you the difference. So this is right here on the left is our uh, Adobe Illustrator vector art version and on the right is our hand drawn roster version. All right, so we're both zoomed in at 100%. This is the same image. This is vector on the left and on the right is the ink. And you can see that the lines are a lot smoother. There's some differences on the end here. There's a little bulb and right there it's square the way I drew it. Um, there's things that get moved around, things that get changed slightly that's something you just have to kind of deal with you can actually go in by hand and adjust the dots but that's the tutorial for another time um, but yeah that's how I get it uh, super sharp and super crisp and hope that helped uh, if you have any questions make sure to comment and I'll try to answer them when I can